Hi, hello and welcome to Cartooning for Beginners lesson number four. Here's little Eric, he won't be joining me with the lesson but he wanted to say hello today and uh, see you guys. I hope you're having a good time, I mean, uh, coping well I hope. And so today what we're going to do with this lesson is keep it nice and simple, nothing too difficult, just have a bit of fun this time round. We're going to do some crazy animals and also stay tuned for to the very end for a top tip but more importantly we are going to show some of your work that you have sent in and it's absolutely amazing everything that i get to see is brilliant so please keep sharing all your work on social media my twitter account i will respond to as many people as i possibly can if you send it in to me there also on instagram and on facebook so let's have some fun, let's relax, kick back and spend the next 15 minutes in the company of a bit of paper and a marker pen. Okay, see you later. So our first fun animal we're going to do today is Frank, my whippet, that I draw and paint quite often in my work. But this one's going to be a, probably a little bit more cartoon-esque, obviously, because it's a cartoon workshop. And what I'm trying to do all the time with these workshops is to devise ways that you can draw without using a rubber because uh, the rubber is a cartoonist's best friend, but not everybody in the house will possess a rubber. So I'm just basically showing you how you can achieve things with simply just some paper and one drawing item. So let's get cracking and start with the basic shape for our Whippet dog. Or any dog really, depends how you put your ears I guess. So we're going to start off with a fat carrot. And we're going to do him sort of oh, round fat carrot this shape. I'm going to just uh, darken that line off. My pen was a bit dry when I started that line. I think it's uh, warming up a little bit now. I'm using a marker pen today so you can see my picture a little easier on your screen. So there we've got this sort of fat carrot shape and we're going to leave this area here because we're going to start adding an ear later on but we want to just leave it sort of blank for now. Right so now we have to decide where we're going to put our dog's eye and I'm going to put it sort of in the middle-ish of this carrot so a nice because we're great at drawing circles now we've been doing them all the time in our lessons a big round circle a nice big eye so now what we want to do is his second eye and we're going to do an half circle this time we're going to do the half circle kind of in line with the original and it goes around like that There we go. So we've got one eye and two eyes. So we, our, our little dog, our pup, he's got a nice soft face, is uh, in the three quarter like we did in our last lesson. So we've seen one eye, two eyes, just slightly off of the middle. And I've just done that there. Just, sorry, I wasn't explaining that one. That we do a nose now at the bottom of the carrot. A nice big round soft shape like that the bigger the nose the kinder the softer the dog looks so the bigger the nose the funnier we are little character is so here we've got this big nose and remember the little light flash that i uh, talked about in lesson one where we do a little patch and we color the rest of the nose in black so if you imagine that this is all colored in black or red red's a good cartoon color in so I'm just doing a quick, simple uh, cross hatch, it's called. And cartoonists can use this quite often to quickly shade an area in without colouring it in fully deep black. So it's just quick lines all the way down and it gives it a shaded look. It's good if you're doing the cross hatch, if you want to do like a dad with a beard, uh, five o'clock shadow of the cold. So we've got the basics now for our little dog. We're going to stick an ear in now. And the ear starts where you sort of finished or you began your carrot shape just here. 
and I'm going to go up, round and back up again. So that's my dog's ear. You can try a different sort of shape if you want, more floppy. But then we can just finish off where we where our ear landed. We can join the line up now, just there. So that's why we leave that gap. And as we did with the eye, and this second eye where we only did half an eye, on this bit we can just do half an ear. So just stick it up and back down again. There. So we've got two ears, only showing one. So that big end shape there. And let's put some eyeballs in. So right in the middle for now. There's one eye, and then just on the line, half an eyeball, because there we go. And now our dog is looking at us. And just to keep this one nice and simple, we'll just do a neck, sort of going down where the eye was, in the middle-ish, a neck, and I'm gonna put a collar in. So to put a collar, to make the collar look 3D, we give a smile like that and then we join that line up like that so it's like a little halo now around his neck and then we trace around follow around the sides and down and another smile and we have our sort of 3d color shape and if we color these little bits in the corner black that adds more emphasis to the color been loosely fitted and we'll just pop down a little bit take the lines out a little bit and I'm just going to do this little shape here and it's like our dog's got a little different color patch like a white patch and I'll tell you what I'll just do a big smile in and there's our cartoon dog now what we always do with cartoons we can embellish them in a way to give our little character uh, some more um, life so with this one we could say the dog's got fleas so we put dots over like this he's a scraggy dog he's got some fleas flying around him and if that's the case we'll put a little bag under his eye there and let's bring some eyebrows in like that it's good sometimes to bring your eyebrow away from the actual head itself that itself gives it a little bit more character and a bit of life and i'll just do a line a little background light so now he's in the park and i'll do a tree and i'll show you how to do a tree at the end of that, my top tip a cartoon tree so i'll just do a quick one here and i'll explain how we do this tree it's a better effect at the end of the lesson so there's our first one our cartoon dog so in this lesson that we're doing this week we're just doing daft animals so let's go with another one let's start with a fat balloon shape so if you imagine you've blown up a balloon and you've got this oval shape nice and fat and round And maybe just slightly a bit squishier in this end than that end. So that's a little bit fatter than that. Now what we're going to do, we're going to put an eye in. And again, we're going to stick with a big round eye. And like with the dog, we're going to put another eye that you can only see half of. Which is just here. Again, we're sort of in line with the other eye. And we're just repeating the sort of same shape, same size as our first eye. Now then, so here we go. What kind of animal am I doing here, you're saying, Pete? Well, if we do this end shape at the top, like that, it should give you some kind of an idea. And if we do a butterfly wing, there there we've got it we're doing a goldfish a big fat goldfish so we've got an end shape and a butterfly's wing 
Now we want to do some little fins to give this some proportion. So what we do, well at the bottom here, we just do a little U shape like that. And then on this side, going into the line, another U shape. And that's our little fish's fins. If you look at a picture of a goldfish, they have these little fins at the bottom and a big fin at the top. And what we'll do is put a mouth in and we'll do an O shape. Because goldfish spend most of their time popping the mouth in and out, opening up and shutting that noise. So there we've got the basics of our little goldfish. Now we want eyes. Now what we can do, we will put one here. And where should we put the other one? We don't have to, we can choose the cells where we put the other eye and it will give our goldfish a, a direction where it's looking or make it slightly a little, little bit bonkers. So if we just do one way over the other end there. There he is, he's looking a little bit half dazed. A little bit like how Homer Simpson looks when he looks a bit half dazed. They always make his uh, one of his eyes drift to one side. So that's what we've done with ours. And then we want to put some, just an emphasis, we don't do it all, just an idea that this goldfish has scales. So what we do, we do one, two, three, three bumps. And then we do two bumps in between. So one at the middle there, and then try again over to it in the middle there. And then finally one more, at the top to top and that just gives our goldfish a hint that it's got scales and then we then our mind our imagination fills the rest of the goldfish in with the rest of the scales put a couple of little lines there for his fin okay well now he's just floating in midair isn't it where where are we going to go with this so what we do a little bobbly little curve over at the bottom and now we're going floating we put a little pebbles there little circles so now we've got the bottom of the goldfish there the tank and to give this goldfish a little bit of life we we'll give some air bubbles that is blowing out of his mouth and we start with a small circle then a slightly bigger circle and finally the third larger circle and that's the goldfish blowing his bubbles as he swims around and if you want to you can do little action flashes to show that he's moving which are these little smiles like that <coughs> and it shows that our goldfish is swimming along in the water and if you feel brave you could put a little toy in the bottom like a bridge or a little castle so let's do that little triangle there go down <coughs> pardon me uh, don't worry about that cough it's not a serious one and then we go maybe just a couple of points a little doorway a couple of windows and he's got a little tight in his bowl you can do anything you like there, like I say, a bridge or whatever. If you've got a goldfish at home, see what it's got in its tank and try and draw that. And there's our little goldfish, little cartoon goldfish. Now we're going to go for something a little bit crazy. We're going to do a bonkers chicken. Now, not everybody's got a chicken as a pet, but I know some people do. And some people have their eggs off them as well and have them in the next in the morning for breakfast but this one we're going to do is a little bit of a disheveled chicken so what we're going to start with are two eyeballs at the top one eyeball and then like we've done before another eyeball just behind the first one like that we want a beak now so we go down pointed up round and back so that's a crazy little beak for our chicken let's give it a neck so just where we finish with our beak in between the middle of the eye there just down 
and the same here just a little bit in follow that down like that so that's our chicken's neck and now what we want to do is we're going to put something on top of the chicken those like red things if it's a cockerel type thing but we could also be feathers so we go one two three doesn't really matter how uh, wonky they are because our chicken's wonky what we're going to do now then is like the balloon that we did for the goldfish we're going to do this for the body of the chicken so we're going to just go in up up a little bit to where we finished with his neck and that's just to give it a little bit of more 3d-ish effect and we go all the way around and back again so a squash type ball there all the way around and if we saw there where the neck isn't finished yet it sort of st stood there flat let's stick some feathers in like that so we're nearly at the end of this chicken we're missing some things we're missing our details our eyes so let's stick some eyes in stick one in there now chickens do look bonkers don't they they look crazy so there we go nice big wobbly eyes and legs going to do skinny legs and what we're going to do is try and follow this line down here and stick some legs in and these are just simply just long stick legs like that that's one and there's two and okay so we're doing these threes at the moment these three wonky feathers let's do three skinny feet one two three one two three and let's do three tail feathers let's shake the tail feathers two three wonky sausages the wonkier the better with this bird because he's a bit disheveled and let's do a wing now because we wanted to put some uh, a wing on this one so you only need to show one wing because we've got him in the three quarter again so only seeing one side of his body so we go all the way around one two three and maybe just go around and join up so there's his wonky feathers and his wonky wing and what we can do is just to do a couple of these feathers here just to show that it's got some feathers on his body we don't have to cover the bird with them we're just giving it a hint and because he's so disheveled we can do some feathers flying off him so if you can think what a feather shape looks like it's a bit like a teardrop like that and we'll do it again out there so it's a bit of a wreck of a bird this one and i'm just going to put a little line through the middle of that feather there and then just one two a little dash and three so that shows he's like got a feather and if we do again those lines which showed that the goldfish is moving you go one two three and then one two three so he's just uh, shaking a little bit like that clucking away you can almost hear him can't you clucking i'll just do the ground they stood on some bits and bobs corn or muck and worms and we have our crazy bird and if you want to you can put a line through the beak there So there's our skitty chicken. So people have been asking about backgrounds with our cartoon characters. So I'm going to show you how to do a simplistic cartoon tree if you wanted to bring your character into the great outdoors, which we're all missing at the moment, I know. And so we could, if you wanted to draw a dog in the park, you could do a tree a cartoon tree so here's how we go first of all we start with a trunk of the tree two evenly length lines either side now we want to split the branches off so we do one thinner branch there and another branch there so we've got like a y shape and then let's do a third one in the middle there so we're just going to keep that simple like that nice and wonky nothing too precise and that's the beautiful thing about cartooning the wonkier 
the more exaggerated your lines are, the more the cartoon itself that you're doing has lie. So don't beat yourself up about being uh, the precision of something. It's the more life in it, the more you crazy your lines are, the better. They really are. Now we want to sort of give an effect that the tree is in full bloom, got leaves. So what we're going to do is we start just in from the end of the line you've drawn. Not on the top, but in, because this gives it a fatter 3D effect. And you just want to be like cotton cloud, wobbly, 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 all the way around. Give yourself as much room as possible till you get to the end. So that's the basics. Now we need to fill the rest of the tree in. So we pretend we've watched where that line goes there and we start again. On this side, two couple wobbles there and the same there, round the back there. Now these are just stuck wanting to do something, these three branches. So what we do again, we do wobbles and we cap the moss so we go one two three just any number and that's our tree in full bloom with leaves and like with the goldfish that I showed you and the chicken with just doing a few little uh, hints of the leaves or scales or feathers we do the same with the tree so just a couple here and there showing that this tree has leaves and then we've got this bottom bit, so we can wiggle that line across. And then under here, we can do some grass, spiky grass. So that gives it another 3D effect. And then we can do some little lines like this, maybe a, a curl like that. So it's a, got a knot in the tree and maybe a squirrel lives in there or a bird. And we just go randomly. Not too many, don't have to like fill your tree up. But there you've got your your tree, a little leaf falling on the ground. And you can add uh, whoever you want in there, maybe some part railings in the background. Or whatever. So there we go, that's our cartoon tree.